about your collection? Well, this is my dad standing in front of his milk truck back in the day. He had a variety of milk trucks along the way, but this was probably one of his first ones. And if you see the hat he's wearing, there's a badge on it. And I was able to get that. So the dairy he delivered for was a, uh, a dairy from Port Mary, New Jersey. And uh, all the drivers own their own businesses. And uh, the milk that he delivered, he picked up from a depot in Clifton on Broad Street. Uh, the corner of Route 46 and, and Broad Street, and the building still exists. I think it's a body shop now, but in any case, um, I started collecting bottles because when I married my wife, uh, she was an antiquer. She liked to go to shopping and whatnot, and so I figured when I'm out with her, I should maybe find something I'm interested in, and uh, I started collecting bottles from the dairy that my dad delivered for um, so I have a variety of them. Uh, these are all quart bottles down here in glass with the Port Mary logo on them. They also use the, uh, the phrase country fresh or country fresh milk on the neck of the bottle. And so I started collecting them. And then they also had a cap similar to this wax and cardboard that was on the top of every bottle. And, uh, there were plugs that went in with the date on them every day. So that was like in the center of this cardboard. Um, and also going through my parents' house when uh, we packed up their house in Patterson, I found old milk bills. So this is what you would get every Friday or every Saturday, depending on which was the last day of the week for your milk delivery. There are a variety of different bottle sizes um, and types. Um, there were the glass pints, and these were the round type bottles. All the bottles that, that came later on, actually, when I was helping my dad deliver milk, um, were square bottomed. But you can see through the years, um, a bottle like this would even have sour cream in it. You can see the wide neck so you could scoop it out with a spoon. And then these I found at a, an antique shop in Hackettstown. These were what they would call a salesman's sample. And they would go to various dairies and show them, this is what we can do for you and make your bottle. So I was actually able to get a couple of these. This one, there's a little damage to the, the glazing on the back. But, but a smaller version of what the big bottles looked like. And then when we moved to North Halden, I started thinking about, well, there's other dairies in this area. And uh, so I ended up picking up an Ideal Farms bottle. This is like a sour cream bottle also with the wide neck. But uh, yeah, they were actually, their farms were in Augusta, New Jersey. And then there were other farms in this, or other dairies in this area. Uh, Sycamac, uh, Westbrook, Franklin Lakes Dairy, Stokes. And so along the way, I've tried to collect a couple of those bottles along the way. Also, um, let me show you this one down here. These are what are called cream neck bottles. Back in the day before milk was homogenized, they would take the milk and then they put the cream on top. And the cream, of course, would always rise to the top. And so the idea was that you could get the cream and then the rest of the milk was like whatever. But most people would just shake it up and mix it together or put the cream in their coffee. This one also is unique because. It has what they call a baby head in the cream. And so I don't know if you can see that in the glass, but it's a raised glass of a little baby's face on there. So. So and I guess you want to see what I looked like when I was delivering milk with my dad. There's a picture of me. Probably, I'm going to say, 12 or 13 years old. And the carrier, I'm carrying with the milk bottles in it, very similar to what's on the floor over there. And there's another one over here. And let me show you another unique bottle. Once upon a time, it was thought that milk would stay better if it was in a brown bottle. 
to keep the sun from getting to it. This is actually from a dairy in Vermont that we got on vacation one year when we were up at Cape Cod. But I found it interesting to have a couple of these in my collection too. It says, in order to protect the fine flavor and vitamin contents of our milk products, we're packaging this in a sunproof container just for you. <laughs> Good piece of advertising there. And then we also have some what they call go-withs that go with. And I was able to find this. As your milkman, you would bring a plastic cap to put on your bottle. I can show you what that would fit on there. And that once you've opened your bottle, then you could keep it fresh. So I have for Port Murray, I also have a couple, I think, from Ideal Farms and one from Stokes, I think. But uh, it's been a fun little hobby. And then I've connected with a couple other people who do it in this area also. And found bottles for them and they found bottles for me. And I'm also a member of uh, the National uh, uh, Milk Bottle Collectors Association. So we, we exchange stories and things like that. But, uh, but it's a fun hobby to have and it's, I'm proud of my collection as you can see. So Bill, tell me about um, a little more about making those milk deliveries with your father? Well, I learned how to get up early in the morning. My dad used to get up around four o'clock to go pick up his milk in Clifton at five o'clock. And then he had two different distinct routes. One was basically Patterson, Clifton, South Patterson, that area. And the other one was Patterson in the north side in Prospect Park and Hawthorne and a little piece of Glen Rock. Those, you, they would alternate. One would be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday route. One would be a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday route. And I got to know Patterson pretty much like the back of my hand, all the different neighborhoods and whatnot. Probably places I wouldn't want to venture to now, but um, it was kind of fun. It really was. And you'd deliver milk and people would have the bottles out in their milk box on the back porch. And you'd put the fresh milk in and go on to the next place. Okay, um, so you had said that you shared about the bottles themselves, but tell me about the significance behind the bottle. Why, why bottles? Why did you choose that? You said some about, you know, I know it's connected with your father, but say a little bit more about why that matters to you. Um, I, I think getting the bottles, um, it brings it back to a simpler time, I think. Um, okay. I, before... Uh, there were milk stores on the corner. It kind of reminds of, of family and of community. People would, you'd, you'd bring milk, you know, and uh, you'd wash the bottles and put them back out. It was, we, were reuse, we were reusing and recycling before we even knew what we were doing. Um, but uh, a few interesting stories along the way. There was a day when uh, I was delivering milk with my dad and we were, uh, I was, around the back of the house and all of a sudden I heard a German Shepherd coming up and showing teeth and barking loudly. And I thought, this is not going to be good. And I had a half gallon of milk in each, each arm, each hand, um, walking along. And it got to the point where I thought it was going to be either me or, or the dog or the milk. And I decided I was going to use the milk as a weapon. And I smashed <laughs> a glass half gallon bottle over the dog's head. He ran away screaming and howling with uh, a mess of blood and, and uh, broken glass and milk. But the rest of the milk got delivered, and uh, I never saw that dog again. <laughs> but working with my dad was fun. I enjoyed it. And he taught me something that I can keep with me to this day, that uh, when we stopped for coffee, coffee is coffee. The minute you add something to the coffee, sugar, milk, cream, whatever, then it becomes a beverage. And so if you're going to drink coffee, you drink coffee black. And so as a young, as a young person, I learned to drink coffee black. And to this day, I still do. So um, the camaraderie, though, of working with your dad, doing something, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. And so having these bottles kind of reminds me of him every time I take a look at them. Tell me more about your dad. What do, 
when you think about your dad, what do you think of? Um, my dad was a real good guy. He, and as large as I am, my dad was small. My dad was jockey size. He, uh, we talked about it when he, when he was drafted into the Navy in order to make sure that he went, he ate a box of saltines and drank a quart of water just to make weight. So when I say he was jockey size, he was jockey size. Um, but, uh, he served in World War II on an aircraft carrier going back and forth in the Pacific and was actually the mailman on, on board. Um, and so we thought after the war was over, after his, uh, his time in the Navy was done, he might be a mailman. Uh, and then that wasn't what he wanted to do. And then he thought he might be a mortician and he wasn't, th that wasn't going to work out. And so then, um, he got into the business of delivering milk and, uh, it was his job probably for 25, 30 years. And then uh, not only was the business changing, but he had some health issues. So he had to step away and we sold the milk routes. Uh, my brother and I did our best to keep them going so that we could find a buyer for them. But uh, we did. And uh, he recovered and ended up becoming a head teller at a bank. And that's where he retired from. But, uh, but working with him on the milk truck, it, it bonded us. I uh, I learned a lot from him. I learned how to how he dealt with people honestly and fairly. And milk was important for a family, for nutrition, for whatever. And yeah, I'm sure there are people who owed him money even when the when the uh, when the business ended. But uh, if you if you needed milk for your kids, that was more important. So what are some of the things that, you know, what, what word might you use to describe it? Some, some uh, characteristics about your dad? I think my dad was, first of all, he was a Christian. And that, that influenced me heavily too. Okay. And uh, I think he was compassionate that he loved people. He loved what he was doing. He told me how to whistle. And because he whistled, I whistle. Um, and, uh, we, my brother and my sister and, and I, and, uh, we grew up in a loving home and, uh, I, I see him smiling all the time. And I say my dad went too soon. He died at age 68 and, uh, he died in his sleep and he woke, actually he woke up and said good morning to my mom and passed. And yet I found out that years later, from the from the doctor after his death that he had been living on borrowed time for a long time because he had myocarditis so he had an irregular heartbeat it was like a clock with a pendulum out of out of time and so look at all those blessings that that I had with him and shared with him and uh, yeah all right anything else you want to share as we we wrap up um I guess yeah um. He he taught me how to how to treat people fairly, and I think that's something I try to do too, and to this day, and try to say positive things, try to do positive things, and keep a smile on my face, no matter what the what the circumstance. So. Good. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure.